Hello again. My name is Joe Berry and I work for Visuality Systems. In this video, I will explain what affects performance as it relates to SMB. So when we talk about performance in SMB, what are we really talking about? There are many ways to define performance when one is talking about SMB. For example, how fast can a large file be copied? Or how long does it take to copy many small files? These two questions refer to data performance. On the other hand, we may ask how fast does it take to traverse a directory tree or to delete thousands of files. These questions refer to metadata performance, that is, dealing with the file attributes and not with the file contents. Let's start by looking at data performance. I want to minimize the time it takes to transfer a large file. What are my options? First of all, you want to maximize the buffer size used in the transfer. The larger the buffer, the more efficient will be the data transfer. But this comes at a cost of using more memory. Plus, the message buffer cannot be larger than what the recipient can receive. In addition, buffers that are too large may actually be less efficient. Messages can be sent asynchronously or synchronously. When communicating asynchronously, within certain limits, a client might send multiple requests to the SMB server before any responses come back. The server throttles the number of client requests allowable by use of a mechanism called crediting. More crediting grants better performance but requires more resources on both sides. The SMB server may grant the client the ability to cache data. This may significantly reduce traffic depending, of course, on the type of activities being performed. For this purpose, SMB offers a somewhat complicated mechanism referred to as uplink or lease, which will be discussed in an upcoming video. So let's now go back to buffer sizes and see what happens when we use different buffer sizes. Here we see the results of a simple test that I performed reading a one gigabyte file via SMB. Note that it took over one minute to read the file with a 16K buffer. Compare that with a 10 second read using a four megabyte buffer. That's a very significant improvement. Also note that beyond four megabytes, there was virtually no improvement. Now, let's look at metadata performance. Many people think that data transfer is the most crucial, timely, and resource-consuming operation. This is not true. Just opening a file for further reads or writes requires more resources and usually takes more time than a single read or write operation. Surprisingly, a server that performs very fast file downloading or uploading sometimes behaves worse when a client deletes an entire folder of files or renames a set of files, or performs a directory traversal of files. Another factor influencing metadata performance is caching. For instance, a client can keep a file handle open for future transactions, which avoids reopening the file. Metadata caching was significantly enhanced in the SMB family of dialects, where an entire directory listing can now be cached by a client. Let's look at how metadata performance has improved over the years with newer versions of SMB. Here we see a graph showing the time it took to read the names of 10,000 files in a folder. I ran this test with everything being identical, except I used different versions of SMB. Note the time went from a high of 401 milliseconds to a low of 80 milliseconds. As you may recall from an earlier video, SMB uses the highest dialect of SMB that both the client and the server support. So now, let's summarize the various factors related to SMB performance. If there is an extensive amount of SMB traffic, more CPU power will be required on both the client and the server side, as well as additional memory for the SMB buffers. Don't forget that asynchronous transfers require more buffers than synchronous transfers, which can use just one buffer. A bigger transfer size also requires more memory. As one can see, performance is always a compromise between SMB capabilities and resource availability. When message signing or encryption is involved, the CPU will likely be overloaded, and this may and will affect performance. Microsoft has reported that message signing reduces performance by approximately 20%. That's why enabling or disabling signing and or encryption is always a trade-off between security and performance. And remember that you will always be limited to the speed of the slowest of the two computers, the client and the server. 
In further videos, we will continue to look into the various features of SMB. Thank you again for listening.